Okay, the next topic I want to talk to you about is wall openings. You can add wall openings in walls that are not windows or doors by using the wall opening tool. This creates a rectangular opening for both straight and, believe it or not, curved walls. All right, so I have a curved wall down here. This is what my opening looks like in plan, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it follows that shape for me, and I can show you what that looks like in 3D as well. Okay, so this is kind of what you get. This is a stack wall. I use a stack wall to kind of just show the extreme of what it might do. In order to add one of those, let me go ahead and just uh, delete out my openings. So select into the space, delete. Okay. In order to add those, you need to be in an elevation or section view or 3D. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leverage the um, 3D view here. And so the way you do it is if you select a wall, it automatically goes and gives this to you as a wall opening option here. So I could, now the difference between this wall opening and this profile is this profile editing allows me to make any shape I want in an opening. But when I use a wall opening, it's predefined as a rectangle or a square. It has 90 degree angles and it must be a closed loop too. Okay, so I'll click that option here. Hover over the wall I wish to pick and I click one time. And then I just, I don't have to keep holding my left click on my mouse. I'm just gonna go ahead and just pull it out. I really don't care what the numbers are yet. Um, I'm just gonna click so it'll make the cut through the entire wall. I do see, and I'm getting off this um, command with my modify setting here. And I, I do want to adjust this because I feel like uh, I should do some adjustment to it and make some measurements and put it exactly where it should go. So uh, let me see if I have a section for that already. I do not have a section for that view, no problem. Let's create one here in the view panel and get my section and draw this in right there. It's looking a little bit too deep for me. That's probably all that's necessary. And let's go to that view. And I can select that into the opening area right there and it automatically sees it as some sort of solid in Revit. So grabbing it is not any trouble. Um, it gives me some dimensions here, gives me some other temporary dimensions, it gives me some other temporary dimensions. This is kind of where that curve begins. So in this case, I'm gonna leverage this dimension. I'm gonna say, you know what, this is supposed to be three feet from that edge of that wall. I'm not gonna leverage this dimension because this being on a curve, it's kind of not a reliable number. So I'm just gonna work with the width of it and it's going to spread itself out this direction. So maybe this is supposed to be a six foot uh, increment and it actually didn't move the way I had hoped and the reason why it didn't move it that way is because I had it selected all right so in this case I will want to go back over here type into three it maintains that six foot for me and I do have that in the three foot opening where I would like I'm going to head back into 3d and I'm going to say you know what I need some more openings here so let me go ahead and select that by the way in the architecture tab there is a set of openings and so they are called by face shaft wall vertical and dormers in this case walls must use walls so you select walls and it's a little picky in the way that you do it um, sometimes you can screw this up and have it going in the wrong direction so if i start too far over here i left click and it just kind of doesn't know what i'm trying to do so i might have to bend my view around a little bit zoom in and click again and as you can see it now picks up that curve that's in that wall. Otherwise, it might just come on out here and do something strange or weird. Uh, I have seen it do that. So just click again uh, to finish it. And notice I have this circle with the slash through it. It's telling me there's no walls for me to make any more openings on because I'm still in the opening command. And as you can see, I can still make some more. It doesn't kick me out right away. All right, so um, you can use the temporary dimensions to size the wall opening uh, in that command and both temporary dimensions and shape handles to modify the opening when it's selected as, uh, as you'll see right here. Notice you get shape handles right here. So I could grab those and yank it in, pull it down, uh, stuff like that, you know, if that's the case. Uh, I could use the align to, you know, get this inside uh, edge and align it up here. And that way I could see like, you know, maybe instantly that, uh, it's at the same exact level. So I'm tabbing right here to get that surface and hovering to get that. And uh, trying to get this one to be in the right place, I might need to leverage some other stuff such as uh, going into the plan here and taking a look. Now, notice that I do not see my openings this time in here. And the reason for that is, is the view range is just simply not at the level to show me the opening. 
So if I come back here into my 3D, chances are is my cup plane is either below this wall opening or it's above it and that's why I'm not seeing it. So currently I can see that this is seven foot seven. That's pretty high because this is a stacked wall. If I come down here and say like maybe four feet, and remember it's gonna maintain that, that, that uh, total height there, right? And if I select this guy and um, let's see here, go back over here to this section and I uh, do not know what its total height is right now. I can see what its top is and I can see what its base is. Uh, so the base, let's say that that guy is four feet. All right, it's gonna stretch it down and maybe only the top of this thing equals up to eight feet. All right, and I could do the same thing over here too. Uh, let's say that this guy goes top and four, there you go. Now these should show up in my uh, plan view. And they are probably just around the view range. Uh, the view range is four feet, so it's right on the cusp. So uh, let me go ahead and drop it just a smidge more like three feet and then it'll, it'll show up for sure, okay? So go back here, select this guy. And we'll just say three feet. Now I'm within that range. Select that guy, three feet. Uh, Revit doesn't like showing you things in the plan that are not, if it's a zero, it's not gonna give it to you. In this case, I have it um, just below. And then this little extra line out here is that um, stacked portion of the wall that you're seeing, so. Um, also, what you might do too is uh, sometimes you're working with walls and you just simply need to make another wall contain the same thing. It's called matching properties. You can select an existing wall, right? So let, let's go over here to the modeling walls ones right quick. And I'm gonna select an existing wall right here, okay? And then up here, you can see that there is the match type properties uh, button here, okay? When you select that command, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take on all the same information as the other wall has. So I pick this wall first as my target wall that I want to mimic, and I click the wall that I want to look like it. Notice it automatically changed out for me. So that's kind of a convenience thing if you want to do that. When you're done with it, you want to go ahead and click into empty space so that way the brush command can end. Okay. So selecting that wall here, you got um, level one, level two constraints, and then you got level one, level two constraints here. So it took on all the same information. What it did not do is affect its wall length, as you can see here, okay? All right, guys, that's all I have now for uh, modifying walls and modeling walls. So if you have any specific questions, feel free to contact me.